Democratic Pennsylvania Senate candidate John Fetterman has challenged his opponent, multimillionaire Dr. Oz, to a lifestyle on minimum wage. Now, keep in mind that around 40, I'm sorry, 64% of Americans are currently living paycheck to paycheck, meaning they're just scraping by. But the situation is obviously further exacerbated by those who are making the federal minimum wage of $7.25, which of course has not gone up in 13 years. The last time the federal minimum wage was increased was 13 years ago. Like, just let that sink in. Now, in a statement marking the 13 years since the federal minimum wage was increased, Fetterman challenged Dr. Oz to living on a minimum wage, you know, in a minimum wage situation where he doesn't have millions of dollars. Uh, some of which, by the way, was provided through the labor of undocumented immigrants that he's now uh, viciously going after. So Fetterman says, so since Dr. Oz, who owns 11 homes around the world, including seven multi-million dollar mansions, thinks that our minimum wage is a livable wage, then he should be forced to live on $7.25 an hour so that he can demonstrate to all of us how it's possible. And by the way, if you're curious to see what this is like, you should definitely read Barbara Ehrenreich and the book she wrote, basically doing this experiment for herself, working minimum wage jobs as someone who goes to people's homes and cleans or someone who works as a waitress or a server. That was an incredible book that really gives you the reality of what people were facing back then. But the situation is even worse now considering inflation is incredibly high, corporate greed is, an all -time, is at an all time high and wages haven't really increased to keep up with that inflation. And so keep in mind that Dr. Oz boasts a net worth of $100 million. And I love what Fetterman's doing because he's focusing on issues, material issues that really do matter to voters in this country. And he's being Pretty successful in redirecting the conversation to these bread and butter issues. Whereas Dr. Oz wants to really dive into manufactured culture wars, Was Yeah, isn't it just astounding when a Democrat gets something right when it comes to messaging and marketing themselves to potential voters? Obviously, nobody is into these rich pricks who think it's their entitlement to, you know, basically lord over us and run the world and run the country. And Dr. Oz has no qualifications for, you know, being a public servant to the people of Pennsylvania outside of the fact that he's a celebrity. And a really rich guy, and he thinks it's his birthright to do so. So, to highlight that he's just a rich, out of touch jerk, um, you know, he brings up a salient point. Like, we need to get this thing past 15, we need to get it to 20, you know, 22 even. Uh, and, and so, I think this is the kind of issue that, the, that people who are working two and three jobs to scrape by, this speaks directly to them. And yeah, I'm sure some of these, you know, these these uh, hovering parents who are worried about what their kids are learning in school and this and that uh, probably won't care as much. But man, there's way more people struggling than, you know, hoity toity people who have these fake problems. Well, look, I think that when people are not getting their needs met economically, it's super easy to manipulate them in directing their rage toward whatever manufactured culture war Republicans want to distract them with. And so I see a lot of that going on. You know, not to minimize the fact that there are moneyed individuals in this country who are also engaging in that culture war just out of pure hatred. But in terms of the average Republican voter, you know, I do see their rage being misdirected. And I do see them getting super manipulated by these Republican lawmakers to freak out about issues that A, either aren't happening at all, right? In the case of like critical race theory being taught in elementary schools, that ain't happening. That's like graduate level um, uh, curriculum. But then there's also the unbelievable incessant focus on hating the transgender community, right? Like on pronouns. And it's like, look, the pronoun debate is not gonna put food on the table for your kids, okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I love that Fetterman isn't digging into that, right? Like he's not 
since he actually has a substantive set of policies that will improve people's lives, he's able to focus on those policies. He's able to reject the deflections coming from Republicans, including his Republican opponent, Dr. Oz, in order to focus on what voters genuinely care about. And that's why he's killing it so far, according to the polling in this Senate race in Pennsylvania. Now, I wanna go to something else here because you had mentioned, oh, imagine that Democrats actually fighting back with an economic message that's popular. I want you to juxtapose what we see from Fetterman, a progressive, to what we saw from the Biden administration when his White House press secretary was asked about people really struggling in this country with low wages. Let's watch. Growth of job growth in the US is shrinking, it's decreasing. And 7.5 million people, a growing number are are multi jobs, meaning they have to work more than one job to afford a living. So is jobs really a good indicator? Look, here's what I would say. We've always talked about the strength of our economy. We've always talked about how historic it's been. And we've always talked about the transitioning, right? The transitioning to more stable uh, and steady growth. And so to your point about uh, the job growth there, this is what we have been kind of stating for the past uh, several months. What do you mean? The economy's great. We've been talking about how great the economy's been from the very beginning. You should just take our word for it. The economy's great. What? So when you're an, an American voter who's experiencing what this economy is really like, if you're working multiple jobs and this is the message you're getting from Democrats, what are you gonna think? Well, Democrats aren't gonna do anything for me. They're not the party of working class people anymore. That is the message they get. And so there's a very clear distinction between progressive or even leftist political candidates versus what we see from the mainstream Democratic Party. You know, I would love to use the example of the people in the Rio Grande Valley, border towns essentially, who have flipped to be more GOP leaning. A lot of those folks just got law enforcement jobs, Mexican people, border patrol people. And when you get those jobs, the Republicans are seen, you know, I don't know if it's credible, but being way more pro cop, right? And the idea being like, I got this job, it's well paying, it's steady, it's helping me build a nice life for myself. I'm GOP, never mind the rhetoric coming out of the White House and from their ridiculous frothing at the mouth base. This matters to me. So this idea that there are people who can't be reached by straight up just meeting them with their material needs. I think the example is the opposite. You Mm -hmm. see actual Latin Latinx. I don't know what we're saying for that one anymore. Uh, and just, I, I've lost the plot on that one. But you know, we're saying like these people, oh, you know, uh, demographics are destiny for the Democrats, blah, blah, blah. Why are they doing this? Well, in the Rio Grande specifically, man, uh, with all these people working in law enforcement, these great jobs, they just straight up went GOP. I don't see why that couldn't be the case for other people. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And While the mainstream Democratic Party seems to be completely oblivious to how self-destructive they are, you see the GOP positioning themselves as the party that defends the working class, when in reality, we know what their policies really entail, right? So in in some very specific cases, especially when it comes to like the fossil fuel industry or jobs related to to border patrol, you know, they might be doing a little better under uh, Republican leadership. But there's a reason for that. The GOP has no problem funding the police state. They love it, they can't get enough of it. But when it comes to jobs for everyone else, when it comes to sustainable jobs that will be here long term, they don't fight for those jobs. They don't care about those jobs and they certainly do whatever they can to help the corporations who offshore those jobs or abuse their workers with incredibly low wages. Republican or right wing populism really means one thing, which is let's get rid of people of color (laughs) and stop any type of foreign aid to any other country and put people to work, but not in a gainful way. Put people to work in a way that's beneficial to our corporate overlords. That's what we see with the right wing. And Democrats just sit idly by and do the bidding of you know, corporations as well, because they're funded by the same donors. That's where we are right now in the country. I mean, we talk about a two party system, but 
Is it really a two party system when you think about it when it comes to the bread and butter issues? And I know some Democrats are like, oh, but Biden's agenda, it was there, it was so great. It's just that it was it was just Manchin's fault. It was Manchin's fault. Mm-hmm. Biden himself admitted that he didn't negotiate with Manchin. I don't know, maybe he was lying about that. I don't know. But clearly he didn't fight for his own agenda because he didn't really care about funding social programs that materially improve people's lives. Hey man, they get they got forty billion to fund that war in Ukraine, though. That's right. That that That's right. sailed through the Congress. Biden couldn't wait to get his pen out to sign it. Those kinds of things get enthusiastic support from the White House. And by the way, they have no problem trying to articulate how they want to sell it. They they will sell the hell out of that kind of crap, which is just corporate welfare. It's just a straight mm-hmm. up government giveaway, government money to companies like Raytheon um, and. Halliburton and all you know, you know the usual suspects in the military industrial complex. They have no problem selling this crap to the American people. But you know, something like uh, you know, can we get these wages up for these folks? Can we get some jobs, some good paying union jobs, pension having jobs in the hands of these folks? That I don't I don't know how to do that. Exactly.